Welcome to today's online midweek Lenten service. We begin with our Old Testament reading from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1-7. through 7. One of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, has died. You know that your servant feared the Lord. Now the creditor is coming to take my two children as his slaves. Elisha asked her, What can I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? She said, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go out and borrow empty containers from all your neighbors. Do not get just a few. Then go in and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour oil into these containers. Set the full ones to the side. So she left. After she had shut the door behind her and her sons, they kept bringing her containers, and she kept pouring. When they were full, she said to her son, Bring me another container. But he replied, There aren't any more. Then the oil stopped. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt. You and your sons can live on the rest. Our gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on the, his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or without clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will also say to those on the left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't take me in. I was naked, and you didn't clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you didn't take care of me. Then they too will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or without clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. In the gospel reading that we just heard, Jesus uses this imagery of separating sheep from goats as he talks about judgment. But to truly understand what he's trying to say, we need to really understand the difference between these two animals. You see, the herdsmen, they would allow the sheep and the goats to range together during the day. But then at night, they would separate them. And to understand the difference, we need to realize that sheep, they're grazers. They would take a bite, munch and chew a little bit, take a step forward, take another bite, and on and on and on. They follow. They know their shepherd's voice, and they follow them as the shepherd leads them to safe pasture lands. On the other hand, though, goats, they're browsers. They don't just simply graze along aimlessly like sheep, but rather they look for things to eat. They're independent. And it's said that while sheep are led by their shepherd, a goat's herdman is led by his goats. At night, then, they would all come together, and the herdsmen would separate them into their, into their own enclosures, the sheep and the goats, for their own safety. How often are you and I like those goats? Independent, focused on ourselves and our own ambitions? Well, if you're like me, you've answered more than I probably care to admit. But that's what confession is. It's a time to come clean, to repent, and to turn away from our sin, and to let Jesus make it right. So I ask you, 
do you admit that at times you put yourself before the needs of others around you? I do too. Have you at times failed to act with generosity toward those that need help? I have too. Have you cast judgment on those seeking help? I'm guilty of this too. And you desire through the power of the Holy Spirit to flee from your sin and be transformed so that you may live with a generous heart? I definitely do too. So know that our Lord has heard your plea and mine. And so in his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and with Jesus' authority, I announce to you that your sins have been forgiven. You have been redeemed. You are his sheep. Go in his peace to serve him with a generous heart. Amen. Prior to living in Coeur d'Alene, as most of you are well aware, my family lived in the Indianapolis area. Well, back in 2007, when Adina and I first moved to Indianapolis from Anchorage, Alaska, we bought our first ever home. It was in a nice neighborhood, lots of families, a corner lot. Well, a couple of years after we moved in, our next door neighbors, they moved and they sold their home to a retired couple, about the same age as our parents. Well, we quickly became very close to Jim and Kathy after they moved in. And with our family being at a minimum of days drive away, they sort of became pseudo grandparents to our daughter, Raina. And then also Denali too, after she was born. Well, one year for Thanksgiving, we were just planning on celebrating on our own. And due to the distance required to travel to see my family in Michigan combined, with my commitments at church for Thanksgiving and the coming weekend services, we just didn't have the opportunity to leave town. But we were okay with that. You see, we had plans to smoke a turkey, make our usual slow cooker stuffing, mashed potatoes, and of course, pie. Well, next door, Jim, he is recovering from knee replacement surgery. But Kathy was still planning on taking them and driving them to see their family a little ways away. Unfortunately, the day before that they were planning to leave, Kathy ended up breaking a bone in her foot and she couldn't drive. Both Jim and Kathy, they were stuck at home without most of their family to care for them. Well, for us, we immediately switched our plans and we decided to bring our Thanksgiving dinner to them. And so that evening, we trekked our food across our yard to their house and we ended up with a lovely Thanksgiving celebration, despite the crutches and the entire situation. I share this story with you, not to pat my own family on our backs, but to explain that that impromptu Thanksgiving get together, it was the result of the relationship that we had with Jim and Kathy. It was a natural response to being close to them. There were no second thoughts about whether we should or shouldn't do it. It was just simply, of course we'll bring dinner to you. Of course we'll share with you. Of course we want to give. You see, generosity 
was the fruit of that relationship. In our earlier gospel reading, Jesus shares the story regarding the judgment using the, that image of separating the sheep and the goats, which would have been familiar to the people of the day. In Jesus' story, the king looks at those on his right, the sheep, the righteous, and welcomes them with his blessing, an invitation into his kingdom, saying, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Well, they're confused, and they have no recollection of this. And they raise this issue with the king, and the king's response is simple. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. On the surface, it would seem that those righteous, they earn their place in their kingdom based on their good works. But we know that this is not what Jesus, Jesus teaches elsewhere. So what is he really saying here? Well, consider the importance of Jesus comparing the righteous with sheep and the unrighteous with goats. In John 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. They follow me. It's about the relationship that Jesus has with us, his flock. In a word, that relationship is faith that God has blessed us with. That's the key to salvation. Knowing that Jesus took our place. He has bought us a forgiveness. He is preparing a place for us. He has won the victory. As Paul writes in Ephesians, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. So why then in Jesus' story does he mention all these generous works? Well, consider these words from Jesus' brother in James chapter 2. Whatever good, what that good is it, my brother, if someone says he has faith but not works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or a sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body? Well, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. You see, generosity is a fruit of faith, a fruit of the relationship that we have with Jesus. As he lives in our hearts and he dwells in our minds, we are compelled to give. In Christ, generosity becomes a natural expression of the relationship that he has with you and with me. Jesus provides that greatest example of generosity, giving up his life for us so that we might be redeemed and live with him forever. As we then allow the Holy Spirit to transform us in faith, Christ's generosity permeates throughout our lives. And just as Jesus' generosity towards us on the cross was so great, it won victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil. If we allow that generosity to then flow through our lives, the results can potentially be mind-blowing. Just in, as in our Old Testament reading, God showed his generosity through the prophet Elijah, or Elisha to the woman in need and miraculously kept the oil flowing until the need was no more and all the available jars were filled. Only he knows the amazing possibilities that lay out there when you trust God to open your heart and give to someone in need. Today, consider our Red Letter Challenge to allow Jesus' generosity to be demonstrated in your actions. How can you, whether it be through Christ the King's own love pantry, another organization in town, or just simply through the personal relationships that you have, give to those that are hungry, in need of clothing, that are lonely, sick, or even in trouble to the point of being in jail? How are you being compelled 
to act, to give. Not so that you may be blessed more, but rather that you might be a blessing to another. For this is the faith that God has already blessed you with. This is the identity that you have as a redeemed child of God, being put into action on our daily walk with Jesus. In his name, amen. Will you pray with me, please? Abba Father, we give you thanks and praise for your mighty works and your generous love that you continue to shower upon us. You have called us your children, and through your word and the water of baptism, you have placed your name on us. Let that identity be revealed to the world in our words and our actions. Transform our hearts to be generous as we are compelled to give from that of which you have blessed us with. Open our eyes to see those that are hungry in our community, those that are a stranger, those that are lonely, that are sick, those that are in trouble, that we may generously give through our actions, that we may allow your grace to be revealed through us. Let your works in us bring honor and glory to you, Lord, and may they be a reflection of the act of faith that you have placed in our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name, along with the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go now with the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.